I purchased a mini CNC router from a thrift store. It looks like it's in, in fairly decent shape other than just messing the knob for the e-stop. But it's pretty clean, like it really hasn't been used very much. One thing I did find on here is all these, on all three axes, the set screws on the couplers were all loose. And so when I would turn this knob, the stepper motor turns, but the axis would not. So I tightened all those set screws. They're all working now. So I'm not sure if possibly the previous owner didn't realize they were loose and just thought it wasn't working anymore, and that's why they gave it away. But anyway, it's working now. Next, I'm going to plug it in and see if it powers up. Looks like the spindle is working. I did some searching for some software for this controller and it looks like it uses proprietary software but you have to purchase it and I really don't want to buy software not knowing if this works or not so I think what I'm going to do is I have this G Shield on an Arduino that I removed from a different CNC router and I'm going to see if I can connect this to this CNC router and get it running with this. I'm going to start by taking the cover off the controller. And now with the screws out I can remove the cover from the controller. So it looks like it has a separate controller board and power supply. So I'm just going to see what I need to do to plug this G-Shield into here. I'm going to start with the X-axis. And you can see coming out of the stepper motor there are four different colored wires. Blue, green, yellow, red. And they enter the controller box here. At this point though, there are only two different colors, two blue and two red. I'm assuming they're separated into pairs, but I'm going to get the ohm meter out and test these. So I'm just going to unplug this x-axis from the board. So using my ohm meter, I tested these and it is, as I had assumed, uh, they're paired uh, reds and blues. And I also, uh, using the ohm meter, I've marked these to match the color of the wires coming out of the stepper motor. The red, green, blue, and yellow. So that I can keep them straight when I'm connecting them to the G-Shield. And then I've gone through each of the axes, the other two and marked the cables, the corresponding wires to match the stepper motors. And now with the G-Shield I'm going to match these colors to the colors that I've marked on here uh, just based on experience that this combination should work and they, they will all be running in the correct direction so this is just temporary. I've connected some jumper wires and just pushed them right into the connectors just to see if this will work. So here's the, the power supply that goes to the board. I'm just going to take that off of there and see what kind of output this has. And then I can connect the power supply to the G-Shield if it's compatible. The G-Shield can run on uh, 12 to 30 volts and it looks like this is putting out 26.3 so that should work okay. So now I have the G-Shield wired to the controller. 
the spindle will still be ran off of the the power supply from here so I won't be doing anything different with that so now I'll just plug in the USB cord and see if I can get this thing to move so I'm going to be running this with universal G code sender at a COM port 3 firmware Skirbo and I'll see if it connects looks like I have a connection so now that it's made a connection, I'll see if I can move an axis. I'll start with the Z-axis. So it looks like that is working in the X-axis. That one's working, and then the Y. So it looks like everything's connected and working. So I'm just going to run a little test pattern now and see how it handles that. So it looks like it's following that G code correctly. So I would say everything appears to be working. I removed the original controller board and I want to mount the Arduino right above this heat sink so I'm going to 3D print a mount that I can use with these tapped holes that are already in the heat sink and I want to line up the USB port with this slot that's in the back of the housing so it'll sit right, ab right about there and then I can plug my USB cable into the Arduino through that slot in the back of this housing. So here I've designed this mounting plate that the Arduino will mount to and I've added a couple of countersink holes on this side and one over here. Those will attach to the heat sink that's in the controller housing. So here I'm 3D printing the mounting plate for the Arduino. Now I can put the mounting plate into the enclosure. And then I'll bolt the Arduino to that mounting plate. And then replace the G-Shield onto the Arduino. And now I can plug the USB cable into the Arduino through the slot in the back. So now I'm going to try it out and see if I can engrave this board 